Thank you so much for joining us on a Friday. I'm Marlon Bowling with you as we watch your ag commodity trade. Let's dive right into our prices here and uh, see where we now stand, and then we'll get some expert analysis in just a brief little moment. On the corn market right now, uh, we started out uh, with a little firmness today. Uh, actually, it started out overnight in the Globex market, and it's carrying through this morning. September corn now seven and a quarter higher at 377, and December seven higher at 390. A lot of folks wondering, did you catch the number? that truck that hit that market during midweek. Now it's uh, recovering again. Uh, on the soybean trade, let's look over there. We have August now 13 and a half higher at 989 and now November up 14 at 1001 and a half. So now we're back up above $10 once again on the new crop month. And on the wheat trade, here we bounce two overnight. September Chicago wheat up seven at 518 and three quarters. Kansas City wheat, we have September gaining as well. We're up six at 521 and a half. And Minneapolis wheat, we have that September contract up 19 and a quarter at uh, 768 and three quarters. And it's actually been six cents higher than that already at one time, or four or five cents higher, I should say. Uh, let's go to the phone and bring in Jim McCormick of Allendale Incorporated in McHenry, Illinois, and uh, get his thoughts on how we're opening up today. Jim, I heard all kinds of talk yesterday from analysts saying that uh, they were real uneasy with that big drop that we saw so fast. And they said, we are not through the critical time of the year yet on these crops. So uh, is that what we're seeing today? I 100% I, I agree. That's what happened yesterday. We saw yesterday, the, we get um, we trade a million weather maps. We were in the midst of a classic weather market. Yesterday's maps took some of next week's heat out and l increased the rain chances. But it hasn't rained yet, and the heat's still in it. Well, guess what? This morning, Marlon, they put some of that heat right back in. Decrease the chances of rain for next week, and we're putting that some of that weather premium right back into the market. That's why we're bouncing back, I believe. We're, it's all weather right now. If nothing else, it makes for a great spectator sport for investors out there as these uh, weather models, I believe, they come out like four times a day, uh, and they have all sorts of different flavors and how they're uh, uh, computerized with these models. So uh, it seems like sometimes one will change, one won't, and then they'll flip-flop next time. Uh, Jim, as you look at the conditions so, you know, we're going to be getting new crop conditions next Monday afternoon from USDA. Everybody fully expected to see a decline in the western uh, corn belt, you know, especially the northern high plains area where they've been missing out on the rain. But in the eastern corn belt, some said that might make up for it with near ideal conditions. Well, I'm hearing all kinds of flooding conditions in the eastern corn belt. I don't know if that's necessarily ideal, Jim. Well, I agree. I mean, I, I think, you know, the, there's a mentality, rain makes grain, but there is definitely a, a, a philosophy of too much of a, too, of a good thing. And I think that's what's going on. I mean, I, I had a customer here in northern Illinois who was trucking out to Iowa said, I've never seen, the, we've seen flooding off and on all year long. He said, the, the ponds that we're seeing right now, Marlon, are some of the biggest we've seen all summer. It's just amazing. I know here in northern Illinois, you got river stages flooded at all-time highs. So I, I think we're losing some production. I think you know the crops are going to show uh, the, the ratings are going to decline in the east, even due to this excessive rainfall. Yesterday on our Facebook Live report that I was doing uh, with Katie Dellinger, our uh, executive producer up in the news department. In fact, uh, by the way, we're going to be doing one again today at about 12:30. But uh, I was calling that our secret story that's developing in the Eastern Corn Belt. Uh, a lot of folks overlooking that, and that could be something that might be developing. Uh, Jim, if you don't mind, I want to bring you back here in just a moment and I want to get your thoughts on what we're seeing taking place here in our livestock trade as well. It's been an active week there. We're talking with Jim McCormick of Allendale. You don't want to miss this. We'll be right back. We are talking with Jim McCormick of Allendale Incorporated right now, and uh, I want to get to the livestock trade momentarily. Jim, you and I were talking about the crop markets uh, a little bit ago and the fact that they are bouncing back again today. It seems like, once again, the yo-yo uh, weather forecasts are kind of bouncing a little more warmer and drier this morning, so the market's uh, responding again. You had a very interesting point, and before I get to the uh, cattle and hog markets right now, I, I wanted to follow up with you on that. You were talking about the soybean conditions in the eastern Corn Belt. And I was talking about some analysts that you read about, they say conditions are near ideal, but with all the heavy rain, there is a problem lurking out there. And you might let our viewers and listeners know what that is. Yeah, the, the issue we, we're concerned about is um, beans don't, as I say, like wet feet. And because what it tends to cause is sudden death syndrome, where the field will just automatically die off. 
Um, and what we found, and in years that tend to be wet, like this year, it tends to be an excessive problem. So a field that looked great today could look dead within a week if it starts happening. And uh, something we need to keep an eye out as the traders because uh, it seems to happen a latter part of July into August is when that starts showing up. And just as a reminder, the soybean conditions last week, and these will be updated Monday afternoon. Just want to point this out and drive that point home, Jim. Iowa, the conditions last week went down five percentage points. Ohio went down five percentage points in the good to excellent category. So that'll be very interesting to see what happens Monday afternoon. And uh, we'll keep tabs on that if nobody else does. Jim, you and I sure will as far as okay. conditions on the beans moving <laughs> forward. I'm glad you brought that up. Thanks for doing that. Uh, no okay, problem. livestock trade. Let's take a look here. Live cattle market right now on the big board. Uh, on the futures, we have August now 36 higher. Last trade, 117.78 on the day, and we have October up 63 at 118.45. On the feeder cattle side, we have the August contract currently trading at 153.25. Now that's uh, within about 15 cents of our high of the day. We had been lower, and now we're up 22 cents. September up 34 at 153.32 right now. So this, uh, this market continues to battle that unchanged level over there, but we keep getting mixed signals, and with a stronger cash market and stronger futures trade, uh, we cannot see any traction at all in this wholesale beef trade here, Jim. Uh, explain how it is that we're seeing higher prices when that keeps going down $2 at a shot. Well, I, it, it, I got to admit, it's a little bit confusing. I mean, when the cash market trades at 118 on the electronic exchange on Wednesday and less than an hour later trade at 120, it, it caught a lot of people. But I think what's going on right now in the futures is the Chinese are in town. They made a big deal. You might have talked about it. They came in and signed these frame contracts to buy beans, um, about, you know, about a third of the production we know they're going to buy. I think you've got some traders hoping maybe they're going to make a big announcement of them buying some beef potentially somewhere down the line. Um, they've opened up the market to it, and it's just optimism that maybe that's somewhere down the line we're going to get some you know, expanded sales to China, which we need to offset this huge wall of beef coming at us. Okay, and I, I was looking at uh, chart patterns earlier this morning, and they do look totally different from live cattle to feeder cattle. Uh, both of them looking at uh, that double top from about a month or so ago as uh, uh, maybe critical overhead resistance. It's a ways away on live cattle with feeders. We're within about $1.40 this morning. I'll uh, keep that in mind. Now, looking at the lean hog trade here today, so far we have the August down $1.14 at 8138 October down 72 Poor carcass cutout values yesterday, Jim, were sharply lower, just like on the beef side. Now here, it seems like the futures is paying more attention to that. Yeah, they, they seem to be paying attention to it. Seasonally, we've been, as we've talked the last couple of weeks, they've been looking for this seasonal high, and uh, maybe we're finally, the market's finally re realizing that this seasonal high is in, the supply is going to build, and the futures traders are going to start taking some of their profits. The funds have been long hogs forever, it seems like, and uh, maybe they're finally lightening, lightening up on that position a bit. So watch out for that giant snowball yep. effect. All right, well, Jim, good to visit with you. Good, uh, excellent uh, guidance on the markets this morning. Jim McCormick is with Allendale Incorporated in McHenry, Illinois, they're off and running, Christina, so we'll keep tabs on them all day. Yeah, everybody always wants to know how's the market going to close. So we've got you and to tell us. And what's the weather going to do? Of yeah, course. Right. That's why we got Tim. We'll be right back <laughs> with much more from you coming up.